Thank you, Nick. I'd like to thank the Financial Times, a synonymous of quality journalism, and Edno for inviting me to this conference. I would have liked to meet you in person, but we are living unprecedented times. This edition is taking place virtually thanks to digitalization. 2020 will be remembered as the year of the pandemic, but also as the year when our world restarted with no turning back. COVID-19 has accelerated the digitalization of everything we do. It is like traveling in a time machine five years ahead of us. When the physical world closes, the digital world remains open. We saw that telework, e-commerce, e-health, digital entertainment, online education or AI help us to prevent outbreaks. This is a brand new world and it probably requires a different kind of globalization. Just an example, in the worst moment of the pandemic, when all the world was trying to buy respirators, it wasn't easy at all. It was like the Wild West. It is not about more globalization, but about better globalization. COVID-19 has plunged the world into a period of radical uncertainty. But we may also look at the COVID-19 crisis as an opportunity to build a new Europe, a better Europe that brings economic and social progress to European citizens based on new values. The response from Europe has been impressive. The European Recovery and Resilience Facility, that is more than a Marshall Plan for many EU countries, is reinforcing the European Solidarity Project. And it will allow Europe to tackle the challenges ahead of us and expand the benefits of digitalization to every citizen in Europe. Digitalization means growth, quality employment, sustainability and inclusion. Digitalization could increase European GDP by up to 3.2 percentage points annually until 2025. Only in Spain, digitalization could create 650,000 new jobs in a decade. Technology has the potential to reduce global emissions by between 15 and 35 percent by 2030. As a matter of fact, Telefonica has bold commitments with the Green Agenda. By 2025, we will reach net zero emissions in all of our core operations. We will have the commission of our copper in Spain, and we will continue to help our customers reduce their own emissions. And we cannot miss this opportunity. But let me share with you the other side of the story. During the pandemic, digital services increased exponentially. Just an example, video calls and online streaming traffic have increased by seven times. I know my market share in those services. National regulators know my market share. The European Commission knows my market share. There is very little or zero control over other providers of the same digital services. But do they know with whom am I competing? What are the market shares of the providers of these digital services? Does any regulator have authority over or the power to request such information? Under what kind of security controls? Are those conversations stored? Where? Under what governmental authority? Who are the new incumbents? All the increase in data traffic is also an increase in value. According to some studies, social media data is worth 20,000 US dollars per household every year. Where is that value? Why is it not in the GDP of European countries? Why don't they tell users what their data is worth? Why don't they share their value with consumers? Why don't they transfer part of that value to each European citizen? I could keep going for hours. We welcome the Commission initiative to regulate gatekeepers in the digital world. This is the right path to achieve a level playing field. But the next challenge needs to be to deregulate the telco sector. It should have been previous but we never lose faith. Deregulation means to put an end to the expropriation of new generation networks by imposing mandated access at regulated prices. Those networks have been built in a competitive environment and cases of co-investment. Deregulation means to stop draining resources from the sector. If we want to accelerate digitalization as a tool of recovering Europe, 
policymakers shouldn't be focused on maximizing 5G auctions revenues nor on keeping telco as a deflationary sector. The money spending spectrum will not be invested in the networks. And finally, we need new competition rules that allow the creation of strong operators and healthy domestic markets in Europe. This is critical. The current situation in Europe is ironic. In a year where it has become more evident than ever that connectivity plays an essential role in the new economy, telco revenues continue to fall and valuation is at its lowest. We are running out of time to make Europe a leader on digitalization. Be brave. Let us compete under equal rules. The, the time to kick the game board is now. Pandemic has accelerated changes and Europe has not much margin to react. This is not about technology. Technology is already here. This is about values. This is about sovereignty, digital sovereignty. This is about rights. I want at least the same rights that I had on the analogical world. We need a new Bill of Rights to defend our values without forgetting the established fundamental rights. We have our own proposal, Telefonica's Digital Deal. This is about Europe. Europe is the center of humanist values. This is about a new Europe, a more resilient and a better Europe. A Europe who speaks with one single voice and spreads its values across the globe. Europe has solid foundations and we have the opportunity to build back better our economies and societies. The time is now. Thank you.